Okay. Dear friends, I'm uh, really delighted to be able to do this, to speak a little bit about the book of Exodus. But in order really to look at the book of Exodus, I think it's pretty important that we begin to take a little bit of a look at the whole panorama of the Old Testament and then to hone in a bit on the Pentateuch itself and finally on the book of Exodus. So, the Old Testament, sometimes we call it the Jewish Testament because it is the, the Hebrew Bible, the, the Bible of the Jewish people, but it's also for us the Old Testament in the sense that what was there in the Old Testament has become the foundation of the New Testament. It's not that Jesus has superseded the Old Testament, it's just that Jesus has used the Old Testament and has brought it to fulfilment. What is in the Old, we say as Christians, is fulfilled in the New. I guess one of the first things I'd like to ask is about the Old Testament. Is the Old Testament a history book? Or is it more a theological interpretation of history, the faith story of the Jewish people? Well, I think you can probably guess it's more the second. It's not a history book. It's not a reporting of what the Jewish people did at all. In fact, for many events, we can't quite get back to what actually happened because it's all been interpreted from generation to generation, told from parents to their children and so on, and interpreted in the light of what's happening to us now. So, in many ways, the best person to understand the Old Testament is not an historian, but it's rather somebody who's familiar with literature. Somebody who can understand how people and thinkers put stories and books together. What we have now is the memory of the Jewish people, kept alive and reinterpreted generation after generation. And it took its final form much later from the events it's purporting to talk about. We don't have direct access to these events such as what happened at the Red Sea when the Jewish people went through the Red Sea. What happened to the Egyptians? We don't know about the destruction of Jericho, for example. We really don't know what happened, but we do know how that was interpreted by the Jewish people as a sign of what God was doing for them. So if we look at the Old Testament and we ask, what really is the Old Testament? Let's spend a moment on that. We'd, we'd say that there are three main groups of books, and we're doing it now as our Jewish brothers and sisters would do it. The first book is called, the first group rather, is called the Torah. And they are the five books of Moses. Now Moses probably lived around the year 1200 BC. But these five books took their final form around the year 500, 400 BC. So 700 years after Moses lived. But the Torah is the most authoritative group of books in the whole of the Old Testament. Then the next group is called the prophets. Now, in the prophets, there are really two groups of books. There's called the former prophets and then the latter prophets. Now, as we think of the Bible, the former prophets are really the historical books of Joshua, Judges, the two books of Samuel, and the two books of Kings. But for our Jewish brothers and sisters, they're all called the former prophets. And then the latter prophets, there are four books in the Jewish Bible. The great prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Ezekiel. And then another book, which has all the 12 minor prophets together. And then the final group, we've had the, the Torah, the Pentateuch, we call it, the prophets. Then the final group is called the writings. And they have 11 books in this. 
They have the three beautifully poetic books, the book of Psalms, the book of Job, the book of Proverbs. They have the five scrolls, they call them, the stories of Ruth, Esther, Ecclesiastes, Lamentations, and the Song of Songs. And then finally, they have what we would call, and what they sort of semi-call, the revisionist historical books of First and Second Chronicles, Ezra and Nehemiah, and the book of, the Apoc of Daniel, which is an apocalypse. So that's what they have, the three great uh, types of books. We do too, but some books fit under others and so on. Now I am going to talk to you about why our Bible is a bit longer, that is our meaning Catholic Bible, is a bit longer than the Jewish Bible and a bit longer than the um, Protestant Bible. The thing is that the Jewish Bible became the Protestant Bible. That's what they accepted. However, in Alexandria in Egypt, there were stacks more Jews living before Jesus than in the Holy Land itself. And they became a very cultivated, a very civilized, a, f a fabulous group of people. And so they wanted to translate the Jewish Bible into their culture, their language, which of course is Greek. And so around the third century BC, a group of 70 scholars, Septua 70, translated the Hebrew Bible into Greek. And it's called the Septuagint version. But in translating it, they added some extra uh, verses to a couple of the books, es Esther and Daniel. And then some of the books that were current in uh, Alexandria in Greek were incorporated into the Greek scriptures, the Greek, what we call the Old Testament. Such books as the book of Tobit, the book of Judith, 1st and 2nd Maccabees, Wisdom, Sirach and Baruch are in our Bible and in the Greek, the Orthodox Bible, but they're not in the old Jewish Bible, therefore not in the Protestant Bible. That's a little bit of, you know, you've got to tell you a little bit about that because we often wonder what's a Catholic Bible, what's... And those books are often though found in the Protestant Bible, but they're called deuterocanonical second level of scripture so that's that now i'd like to talk a little bit about inspiration because we say that all of scripture and especially the old testament and the new all of scripture is inspired what do we mean by that we certainly don't mean that somebody was telling god was telling somebody dictating to somebody what to write no, that's not right. God uses human beings as we are, and God's purposes through events and through human beings are put down in very ordinary, simple ways. And this is something that I thought I, I rather liked, so I'll just speak to you about it. Inspiration are those texts that we call scripture, which somehow or other carry and witness to the most compelling the most beautiful and the wisest understanding of what life's about. And in these texts, God's purpose and God's very presence have been breathed into by God himself. So they're very special for us and to be treated with reverence and love. We can never think of the Old Testament as being old and had it. It's rather, it's our deepest preparation for understanding the New Testament and Jesus. So, just a reminder to us too about the Old Testament in general, that it covers a period from the patriarchs, from, say, Abraham, we don't know when he was, but say he lived nearly 2000 BC, 1800 BC. We come to Moses around 1200 BC. We come to King David, 